Before we start with the listening test, make sure to subscribe my channel, like this video, hit the bell icon, and don't forget to mention your score in the comment section below. Section 1. Listen to the conversation between a Japanese student and a housing officer and complete the form. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. The conversation relating to this will be played first. Yes, what can I do for you? My friend is in a homestay and she really enjoys it, so I'd like to join a family as well. OK, let me get some details. What's your name? My name is Keiko Yochini. Could you spell your family name for me, please? Yes, it's Yochini. That's Y-U-I-C-H-I-N-I. The student's family name is Yuichini, so that has been written on the form. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Yes, what can I do for you? My friend is in a homestay and she really enjoys it, so I'd like to join a family as well. OK. Let me get some details. What's your name? My name is Keiko Yochini. Could you spell your family name for me, please? Yes, it's Yochini. That's Y-U-I-C-H-I-N-I. -I. And your first name? It's Keiko. K-E-I-K-O. That's Keiko Yochini. OK. And you're female. And your nationality? I'm Japanese. Right. And could I see your passport, please? Here it is. OK. Your passport number is... J O six three three seven, and you are how old? I'm twenty eight years old. Now you are living in one of the colleges. Which one? Willow College, Rome twenty one C. Right, twenty one C Willow College. And how long are you planning to stay with homestay? About four months, longer if I like it. And what course are you enrolled in? Well, I've enrolled for twenty weeks in the advanced English studies because I need help with my writing, and I'm nearly at the end of my first five week course. Right, so you've completed five weeks and you have enrolled for another 15 weeks. That's about four months altogether. That's right, about four months. Before they continue their conversation, look at questions 6 to 10. As you listen to the rest of the conversation, complete the form by filling in the numbered spaces 6 to 10. OK. Do you have a preference for a family, with children or without children? I prefer... I mean, I like young children, but I like to be with older people. You know, I like someone of my own age. OK. And do you smoke or drink? No and no. Would you mind being with a family of smokers? Yes, I would. I don't like smoking. I'd rather be with a family of people who do not smoke or drink. OK. And what about pets? Oh, I love animals. I'm a veterinarian, so that's fine. The more, the better. All right. Now, what about you? Are you a vegetarian or do you have any special food requirements? No, I'm not a vegetarian, but I don't eat a lot of meat. I really like seafood. And what about your hobbies? I like reading and going to the movies. Do you play any sports? Yes, I joined the handball team, but I didn't like that, so I stopped playing. You know, I played tennis on the weekend with my friends. All right, let's see. Name, age, uh, transport. Are you familiar with the public transport system? No, I'm not really, because I've been living on campus. I've been to the city a few times on the bus, but they're always late. What about the trains? I like catching trains. They're much faster. Well, let's go and check on the computer to see what I've got. Um, listen, would it be OK to leave this with me? Could you come back after class this afternoon? Yes, of course. I'll check my records and I will give you details this afternoon. Thank you for your help. It's a pleasure. I'll see you this afternoon. Bye. Bye. 
That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 2. You will hear part of a talk given by a member of staff at a hospital. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Hello and welcome to the homepage for the Healthy Hearing Medical Clinic and Surgery, where we'd like to share a little more information about the services we provide and more. Our hospital is one of the leading specialised hospitals in the United Kingdom, attracting the very best healthcare professionals from around the globe. Not only are we a leading medical practice, but we are also the only hospital in the United Kingdom dedicated entirely to the treatment of and research into the curing of hearing loss. Our facilities and staff here are renowned across Europe, attracting thousands of patients a year. Our consultations can number anything up to 11,000 patients a year. However, we aim to treat around 5,000 patients a year so as to maintain and ensure the quality of our services. Our patients are guaranteed the highest standard of care, as well as the use of our first-class facilities. All patients requiring overnight treatment are provided with their own private room with ensuite facilities, as well as a state-of-the-art entertainment centre, which includes a flat-screen LCD television and PlayStation. Appointments with our healthcare professionals can be made at any time during the week, with female doctors available between 8am and 11am. If you need to see a doctor outside of these times, please visit the Out of Hours page of our website for more information. Our doctors are all trained to an exceptionally high standard and practice a vast array of specialities. Mr Roberts is a fully qualified ear and throat specialist. Mr. Edwards is a paediatric hearing specialist, while Mr. Green specialises in reversing hearing loss. For more details about our people, please visit the staff members page on our website. During a consultation, doctors will sometimes decide medication is required, for which patients should receive a prescription. There are several pharmacies within the city, however, we recommend that patients use the pharmacy housed within our healthcare facility. Our in-house pharmacy is well stocked at all times. Our products are competitively priced and our pharmacists are on hand to help and advise from 8am until 10pm from Monday to Saturday and from 9am until 12pm on Sundays. If you require any help outside of these hours, please see our Out of Hours page on the website. Since the Healthy Hearing Medical Clinic and Surgery also functions as a teaching hospital, we aim to provide our students with every opportunity to expose themselves to medicine in practice. Therefore, we would like to encourage our patients to give their consent for a medical student to attend their consultations. If our patients are not comfortable with this, there will be a form at reception where patients will be able to opt out. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20.
Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Now, please look at the map I've given you of the Healthy Hearing Medical Clinic and Surgery. For those not familiar with our practice, reception can be found through the main door at the end of the corridor. If your consultation is booked with Mr. Green, you need to go through the main door and turn right by the nurse's desk, and his office is at the end of the corridor on your left-hand side. If you need to alter any of your personal details, please visit our secretary at the Office for Medical Records, which you will find next to the therapy room. If you're awaiting surgery, please first check in with reception before taking the first door on the right after you enter the clinic. Finally, in the event that you feel disappointed with any of the services we have provided or have any further questions, please locate our manager's office which can be found near the Office for Medical Records and between two closets. If you have any more questions about the Healthy Hearing Medical Clinic and Surgery, please do not hesitate to contact us on 01256111111. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3 Ah, Francis and Steve. <laughs> Hi. Now, before we start the tutorial, am I right in thinking that you haven't heard about Lorraine? No. What about her? Um, she's already left. What? Well, she hasn't told anyone. <sighs> you sound surprised. Uh, weren't you half expecting it? Yes, but she could at least have told us, though. We've been on the course together for the past three years, and it would have been nice to know. She always was the sort to keep herself to herself. Yes, I know what you mean. Did she give any reason? Well, she got that job. What? Yes, and she's been given permission to leave, as there's only a week to go before the end of the course. But she'll be back for the exam week. Oh, well, we'll just have to catch her on the mobile after the class. She's gone back to Wales first. Oh, dear. We'll get hold of her on the mobile. She did say that it might not be possible to contact her for a couple of weeks. Oh, OK. If that is what she wants. Right, to work. We're here to look at your assessment marks for your coursework. I take it you haven't seen them yet? No. <laughs> not yet. Well, you'll both be pleased. In fact, very pleased. Yes. Francis, you have come out with the top mark in the year. Oh. You have, in fact, got a starred first. Wow. Aren't you pleased, Francis? Yes, I'm just speechless. <laughs> and um, what about me? Well, Steve, you got a first as well. <laughs> oh. I don't believe it. <laughs> you might have done even better, but there were a few faults with the 5,000-word project you did on traffic management. And what about the book review we had to do? Yours was, I can safely say, the best we have ever had. <laughs> You're kidding. I'm not. In fact, you have won the departmental prize for the piece. It's a pity, really, that your project wasn't of the same calibre. It's still not bad at all, though, is it? It certainly isn't. What do you think were the faults with your project? Uh... I just wasn't very happy with the conclusion, and I got myself in a bit of a twist with the argument about road pricing. By and large, your overall conclusions were OK, and I would say that your thoughts on road pricing were quite original. The problem was more with the actual end. It was a bit disappointing. You started off well, but then it ended rather suddenly, as if you got fed up with it. <laughs> yes, I did kind of stop fairly abruptly. I couldn't think of much to say, even though I knew it was important. Yes, that section needed a bit more work on it. But, as I said, by and large, it was very good. And, Francis, mm -hmm. your project was excellent. So much so that we think you should take it further, and perhaps to a PhD or at least an MPhil. What do you think? 
Um, I hadn't really thought about it. I've just been concerned with getting through this final year and getting all the coursework and exams out of the way. I can understand that. But I do think that you ought to consider it seriously. If you perform as well in your exams as in your project work, you're on course for a first. Do you think that I'd get funding for it? Well, any grant will be discretionary, but you have as good a chance as anyone else. I'd even say a much better one. Mm. If you do get a first, it'll be the only one we've had in this department for three years. And I'd be happy to be your supervisor. Thanks. I'd like that. Do you think I should start applying for it now, or wait until after the exams? I think you must really start thinking about it as soon as you can. Mm. And Steve, what about you? Have you thought about going on to do research? I have thought about it, but I have a job lined up if I get a good degree. And quite honestly, I am fed up with not having enough money to do the things I would like to do. <laughs> I can understand that. Is there anything that either of you would like to talk about? Yeah. I have a couple of things I'd like to ask, if you don't mind. OK. We have roughly uh, 20 minutes left. So, Steve, would you like to go first? Right. Um... Good morning. My name is Dr. Mervyn Forrest, and I specialize in management techniques and training. I've been invited here today to talk to you about the cost to the economy of bad management. And what I would like to dwell on first is an area that has recently been exercising everyone, and that is coercion in the workplace, or to put it more simply, bullying. It has been estimated that bullying at work costs the British economy up to four billion pounds a year in lost working time and in legal fees. And with the problem apparently on the increase, it is time that managers took on board what is happening. I would like to think that what is perceived as bullying is nothing more than lack of experience, insecurity, or lack of awareness on the part of managers, and not a conscious effort to attack someone. But that is perhaps a case of, um, of my being naive or over-hopeful. Before we break up into groups to look at the first task on the handout you've got, I'd like to give you a start with some of the main bullying methods that have been identified so far. Basically, what I'm going to do here is to give you examples of one or two points. Uh, can you all read the OHP clearly? Yes? Right, off we go. The first item on the list is giving people tasks which managers themselves cannot do and which are therefore impossible to achieve. This is, in fact, a very common strategy used by managers to manage their subordinates. It gives certain people a false sense of security as they watch others failing while they try to achieve the goals set. Another simple bullying technique is constantly moving the goalposts especially when one's employees are in the middle of a task. This is not bad management, it is just plain stupid. All targets and goals set should be easily achieved within a realistic time scale. Sending memos to someone else criticizing the performance of a task where the individual has no way of replying is another common technique, especially when the manager concerned does not reply or makes it impossible for subordinates to contact him or her by not answering the telephone or not replying to emails. This is not the style of a sound manager, but rather the antics of someone with emotional problems. If you behave like that, don't expect your staff to respect you. And now, the technological bully. It is interesting how all tools designed to help can be turned into dangerous weapons. The urgent email bully is fast becoming a problem in the office. Employees turn on their computers to be faced with a string of badly worded emails, making instant and often unrealistic demands, which reveal the hysteria mode of management. Have you ever felt a sense of dread before looking at your email, even your personal messages? All companies should develop a company strategy whereby there is an email code of practice, with offensive messages being forwarded to a designated person for appropriate action. 
I would now like you to break up into groups and brainstorm other bullying techniques which you think you may have experienced and, perhaps, if you're honest, which you have been party to. I can think of at least nine more bullying strategies. I would also like you to consider ways in which you think that each of the techniques on your list can be countered. Is everyone clear as to what the task is? Yes? Okay. You've got 20 minutes to do this. Section 4. You are going to hear a lecture about the behavior of dolphins. First, you have time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen, and answer questions 31 to 40. Okay. Today's lecture is about the behavior of dolphins. Dolphins are mammals closely related to whales and porpoises. There are almost 40 species of dolphin, and they vary in size from 1.2 meters and 90 pounds, up to 9.5 meters and 10 tons. They are found worldwide, mostly in shallower seas of the continental shelves, and they are carnivores, eating mostly fish and squid. Dolphins are highly social animals, often living in pods of up to a dozen individuals, though pod sizes and structures vary greatly between species and locations. In places with a high abundance of food, pods can merge temporarily, forming a superpod, which groupings may exceed a thousand dolphins. Membership in pods is not rigid, with interchange being common. Dolphins can, however, establish strong social bonds. They will stay with injured or ill individuals, even helping them to breathe and bringing them to the surface if needed. This altruism does not appear to be limited to their own species. A male dolphin called Moko in New Zealand was observed guiding a female pygmy sperm whale together with her calf out of shallow water where they had been stranded several times. Dolphins have also been seen protecting swimmers from sharks by swimming circles around the swimmers or charging the sharks to make them leave. Dolphins also display culture something long believed to be unique to humans and possibly other primate species. In May 2005, a discovery in Australia found Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins teaching their young to use tools. They cover their snouts with sponges to protect them while foraging for food. This knowledge is mostly transferred by mothers to daughters, unlike primates, where knowledge is generally passed on to both sexes. Using sponges as mouth protection is a learned behavior. Another learned behavior was discovered among river dolphins in Brazil, where some male dolphins use weeds and sticks as part of a sexual display. Dolphins may also engage in acts of aggression towards each other. The older a male dolphin is, the more likely his body is to be covered with bite scars. Male dolphins engage in acts of aggression apparently for the same reasons as humans, that is, disputes between companions and competition for females. Acts of aggression can become so intense that targeted dolphins sometimes go into exile after losing a fight. Male bottlenose dolphins have also been known to engage in infanticide, which is the killing of their young. Dolphins have also been known to kill porpoises for reasons which are not fully understood, as porpoises generally do not share the same diet as dolphins and are therefore not competitors for food supplies. The main food of dolphins is fish and squid and various methods of feeding exist among and within species, some apparently exclusive to a single population. One common feeding method is herding, where a pod squeezes a school of fish into a small volume known as a bait ball. Individual members then take turns plowing through the ball, feeding on the stunned fish. Corralling is a method where dolphins chase fish into shallow water to catch them more easily. Orcas and bottlenose dolphins have also been known to drive their prey onto a beach to feed on it, a behavior known as beach or strand feeding. Some species also whack fish with their flukes, stunning them and sometimes knocking them out of the water. When it comes to playful behavior, dolphins show various types, often including objects, self-made bubble rings, other dolphins or other animals. When playing with objects or small animals, common behavior includes carrying the object or animal along using various parts of the body, passing it along to other members of the group, or, or taking it from another member, or throwing it out of the water. Dolphins have also been observed harassing animals in other ways. For example, by dragging birds underwater without showing any intent to eat them. 
Playful behavior that involves other animal species with active participation of the other animal can also be observed. Playful human interaction with dolphins being the most obvious example. However, playful interactions have been observed in the wild with a number of other species as well as humpback whales and dogs. That is the end of IELTS Buddy Listening, Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. अगर आपने मेरे चैनल को अभी तक सब्सक्राइब नहीं किया तो मेक श्योर टू सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल लाइक दिस वीडियो हिट द बेल आइकन फॉर डेली आइल्स कॉन्टेंट एंड डोंट फॉरगेट टू मैंशन योर स्कोर इन द कमेंट सेक्शन बिलो